Every now and then my mum comes out with these little one-liners which really made me chuckle. And the other day I was speaking to her on the phone and she said, People don't know enough about the moon these days. I don't know how much you know about the moon and I honestly don't know how important it's going to be to your life if you don't know anything about the moon at all. But for a while now I've wanted to do a mini-series on YouTube in which I talk about science-y stuff that interests me and I thought, you know what, if I'm ever going to start doing that then the moon is probably a good place to begin. So, fun science, fun science, fun science, it's a science of fun, yeah. Now the obvious question to start with is how did the moon get there? And although scientists have a pretty good idea of how the moon came to be, it's just that, it's a pretty good idea and nobody is 100% certain. The moon is a bit tricky to figure out because it's so friggin big, in fact, bit of jargon, it's the biggest natural satellite relative to its primary planet in the entire solar system. For example, Jupiter, Bloody massive planet, got about 63 moons going around it, but relative to the planet, the moons are like little specks of dust floating around, whereas our moon is about a quarter of the diameter of our planet, which makes it very big and very confusing. For example, a past theory was that the moon must have come in from some random bit of space and got caught in orbit by the Earth's gravity, but because the moon is so big, it would have just flown straight past. The best idea that scientists have currently is something called the Giant Impact Hypothesis, which is a, a great name for a hypothesis. If I was a hypothesis, that's what I would want to be called. The hypothesis goes that a long, long time ago, back when the Earth was just a baby covered in a bubbly magma ocean, this body, this protoplanet, comes flying in from nowhere about the size of Mars, crashes into the Earth and sends stuff just everywhere, just stuff. Bits of Earth are going everywhere, bits of the protoplanet are going everywhere, and gravity sees this and is like, oh, stuff. I want to pull that stuff together, and so it does, and most of the stuff from this big collision goes in to make the Earth, while a little bit of it goes up to make the Moon. And that is the best idea that we have in terms of how the Moon came to be. Now when you look up at the full Moon during your romantic picnic in Paris, or during your werewolf cycle or whatever, what you're actually looking at is called the lunar near side, because it's lunar, like the moon, and it's the near side, because it's the side near us, obviously. The mad thing, though, is that we only ever see that one face of the moon, and from here it doesn't look like it's spinning. But in fact, the Earth and the moon are spinning around in a kind of harmony. The moon does one rotation on its axis for every orbit it does around Earth, which results in the moon rotating, but constantly looking at us all the time, like a kind of overbearing parent. And if you think that's strange, what's even more interesting is that the moon's orbit is in no way perfect, it's actually slowly moving away from us every single year. And not only that, but because the gravity of the moon has an effect on the spin of the Earth, as the moon gets slowly further and further away, the spin of the Earth is actually starting to slow down, and our days are becoming longer. Fortunately though, the moon is only moving away from us about 4 centimetres every year, which results in a slowdown of the Earth of about 15 microseconds a year, so... You'll be long dead before you see any kind of noticeable change, so don't worry about that. One more fun moon fact before I go, you might have heard of a guy called Dennis Hope, who calls himself the interim president of the galactic government, for real, and who claims to own the moon, which is pretty cool, or would be pretty cool if he actually did, but he doesn't. In fact, space law dictates that under the moon agreement, this is all for real, Neither the surface nor the subsurface of the moon, nor any part thereof, or natural resources in place shall become the property of any state, international, intergovernmental, nor non-governmental organisation, national organisation, or non-governmental entity, or of any natural person. So, Dennis Hope, who thinks he owns the moon, is a silly head. And that's it, everyone. Fun science, I hope you had fun. If you want me to do more of these, then suggest in the comments a bit of science that you'd like me to do. And if you don't want me to do any more of these, I'm sure you'll let me know, you usually do. That's the end. Goodbye! Uh, you've just had the almost imponderable joy of watching Charlie is so cool-like, which makes you like cool.